On-the-scene coverage of ACC 13 is supported by Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Incorporated. We had new information here at the late-breaking clinical trials on the partner trial, two different components of it. Uh, presented uh, today were the three-year results from the partners, part of the cohort that was the TAVR versus surgery, uh, with the three-year outcomes looking very, very good. Really identical outcomes between surgery and the um, either type of uh, transapical or transfemoral placement of the uh, percutaneous valve. They had an echo sub-study that, that looked very good, similar outcomes. And so, uh, you know, I think this was a, a very reassuring to me as someone who sends people down to the cath lab that the valves weren't falling apart after three years. Yeah, I think it's really great data. Of course, the one-year data from the study looked terrific, but a question, a legitimate question that was raised is the procedure durable? Yeah. And I think the study shows out to three years, yes, TAVR is durable. Yeah. And that to clinicians should be a very, very reassuring signal. Yeah. In particular, I think the transfemoral approach is an appealing one. And of course, because of vascular disease, not every patient's eligible for that. But separate from this particular study, yeah. um, there was also uh, a uh, new trial, Partner 2, that examined a second generation or a next generation TAVR device that is lower profile. Okay. And what that study showed was compared to the older version, and in fact it wasn't really the older version, it was an improved older version. So this is almost a third generation device, mm -hmm. that there was a reduction in vascular complications that was okay. pretty large and pretty significant. And as oh, you're yeah. aware, one of the big problems uh, with TAVR is a lot of those patients are vasculopaths because they're yeah. older patients, calcific AS, lots of times significant and peripheral atherosclerosis, especially in the iliacs and femorals, and that makes vascular access very tricky. But with this lower profile device, the complication rate came down quite substantially. Well, that's terrific because, you know, the notion of transapical is a little kind of, you know, it's a big operation to think, well, maybe if they can tolerate a transapical thing, why not just do the regular aortic valve replacement? Uh, but if then more people can have this new device, um, it's pretty amazing the number of people that get sent from all over New England to the Brigham, uh, you know, for this. Right. So, I, and I think we're at a really exciting time in TAVR where things are starting to take off. The technology is improving. There are further iterations of the technology, yeah. and I can imagine, based on data from the future, that there will be indication creep, but appropriate indication creep. So, right now, the major focus in clinical practice is on patients who are truly inoperable, but I can see that moving towards not just high-risk surgery patients, but moderate-risk patients. And those trials are ongoing and planned for a variety of devices, but the field's moving rapidly. Yeah. So, so right now, if you want to do it, it's only if you're deemed inoperable by a surgeon that you're allowed to, to do this? Yes. Yeah, so really, it, it's um, uh, the heart team approach where a surgeon and interventionalist and a uh, general cardiologist have conferred and decided, yeah. yes, this patient truly is inoperable, depending on the center, maybe even a couple of opinions from surgeons. And, and, and if a high volume surgeon really thinks that this is risky, yeah. and, and preferably you know, a, a team agrees with that, then TAVR can be considered in these yeah. inoperable patients. But the data XUS are already pretty good, though not you know, level 1A type evidence, that uh, this is a good alternative for patients who might even be high or moderate risk for surgery. Yeah. Well, it's exciting, and you know, to see the three-year results here, maybe that'll be reassuring, can open up some of those new indications. I think so, you know, a lot of times people don't realize that these valves have been tested on a bench top. I don't mean the specific one being implanted in a person, but the uh, models have been tested on a bench top for fatigue, where they're opened and closed, you know, thousands of times to make sure that they can last for a period of years, just as with surgical mechanical valves. And, yeah. you know, that data obviously looked good before companies yeah. moved into humans. So there's yeah. good reason yeah. to think these should be durable. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm Chris Cannon here with Deepak Bhatt for On the Scene. <laughs> <laughs>